The greatest shocks are the disproportionate effects uh, of the ongoing, um, I don't want to say crisis, it's a, uh, it's an, it's a chronic recession that we're living in, because I, I do think that the cities are the condensed sites where the uh, intensified struggles between uh, global capital corporations and workers uh, play out. We see massive displacements of population. We see, uh, we see growing uh, amount of skyscrapers and expensive developments while we see growing prices and uh, dropping real wages. Uh, we see displacement of people who have been living in the cities for generation. Uh, we see hipsterization, this sort of uh, appropriate of the aesthetic of the poor and it's a very ugly landscape where there is less and less space uh, for the everyday human being to reproduce unless they're spending money. In order to have rights you need to have a proven address. People, because of real estate speculation, people could no longer pay rents. And according to our 1988 constitution, uh, Property should accomplish its social function. It means property should be divided. As I said before, 1% um, of uh, people in Sao Paulo have 25% of land. There's a new concept in Mauritius. A new concept is private smart cities. And these are, these are gated cities which um, is outside, outside municipal, outside citizen control, and which is owned by capitalists, uh, pro -capital, by capitalists and finance sector, and mafia also. So it's, we don't have the same meaning. We tend to think of globalization and financialization as some kind of abstract, no? global uh, process. Uh, but it always hits the territories. I mean, uh, both uh, uh, the financialization uh, processes and the global, global trends, they need uh, territories, they need people the, to buy the products or to work or to uh, create ideas, uh, whatever. So I think that working on the cities give us a, a very uh, physical, you know, embodied experience of what happens when a financial, for example, uh, uh, money uh, floods a city, like this happened in Spain, no? and then you have this construction bomb. What, what are the impacts of this in people's life? You see it in, in the cities. And um, I was in the face of the crisis of the nation states, and I think that the lack of trust uh, in, in uh, classical uh, parties and institutional politics um, the proposal that we made for the cities, the municipalism, this new wave of municipalism in Spain, proposed some other kind of politics, pro proposed uh, an idea of a government that is closer to people. And well, we also thought that um, if we have to address the question of what is uh, the uh, government doing, we should start by cities because it's the place where uh, democratic structures could be more uh, easily implemented. With capital being more mobile and workers being locked into different territorialities, controlled by visa regimes, increasingly impoverished, uh, people get pitched against each other. There is rising xenophobia, right-wing forces. And what, what an average human being does not always understand is that it's not their neighbor, it's not somebody of other color or religion who is the source of their dire state. It is the global capital. I believe we are living in a moment with a unique historical opportunity. We are in this process where certain technologies have been developed that really allow us to, to break power structures that seem impossible to break. The internet especially is at least as important as the printing machine in the Middle Ages that broke the cultural hegemony of the Catholic Church in Europe, which was a power structure impossible to to think beyond them. I think that we have to ignite the imagination of the possibilities that technology allows while getting away from the Silicon Valley narrative that is usually um, centered around white men and that ends with like Elon Musk lifting himself into the heavens into this like dildo shaped thing to spread global capitalism to the, to the galaxy. There's another way to use technology that is not techno deterministic. But technology is here and we can use it to advance our ideals and 
when we think about appropriate technology, you know, we usually think about like shovels and things which are very low tech. But I think that we can also think about appropriate technology in this digital realm. And we have to, because like I say, it's coming for us. I think our greatest asset is solidarity, because I think uh, every occupation, we are all like a big family. We are able to to be empath empathetic or empathic, I'm not sure, <laughs> to each other's feeling. We are able to help each other. Most of the, f some people that are there were people that lived alone before or people that consider our occupations as a family. So we're there to make sure everyone is heard and we live uh, as a great community. What we need is that people in Mauritius, as a citizen, reappropriate the political space and democracy. That is why I'm, I'm, I'm part of Resistance and Alternative Party, because we want the citizens to be a part of the country, not only what is voted in the parliament and who decide on our, and when, what decide things that we totally disagree. We want them to be part of the country. I'm Ana Mendez Andes and I'm here because I'm part of the municipalist movement in Madrid. I am currently coordinator of Madrid 129. It's one of the groups or the, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, collectives that uh, are part of Aura Madrid, which is the party in the government of the city. I think that there's two potentials. First is the practical potential. It lowers the transactional cost of getting a lot of voices heard. But it also takes back technology. I don't think that you can take technology for granted. So you may say, oh, I don't care about technology, but technology cares about you. So you've got the big five, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, and which one am I forgetting? Uh, on Facebook, yeah. And with a market capitalization of over three trillion, they're determining how our social interactions are mediated. So you may not care about technology, but society is increasingly becoming um, more technological. And I think that technology has to be political. So these initiatives in Madrid and Barcelona, a lot of the cultures that came together for the municipalist movement, you have the feminists, you have you know, like the old left, but you also had the open source software movement. And it's been an influence and it's important because it allows us to enter this political struggle of is technology going to determine our futures? or our aspirations for the future going to determine the shape of technology.